going on, everybody? Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast, episode 10, coming at you on all platforms, including YouTube, if you're more of a video watcher than a listener, right, Jonathan? YouTube. Yep, please watch the YouTube. Takes a lot of time to edit those videos. Yeah, it takes a lot to make me look good. And, you know, from a quality standpoint, but look, YouTube has actually been going really well. I'm really impressed with the amount of people watching. Um, You know, our episodes of the podcast are already competing with a lot of the best dog training videos that we have on there. Yeah, which is pretty crazy because a lot of those dog videos have just been up for a while. Yeah, I mean, we're dropping dozens and dozens a week, but you're, you're right. I mean, there's ones that have been there for literally eight years. So, but I guess, I mean... Hopefully, I mean, that makes me feel good. Hopefully, uh, the the content that we're putting out here, the, 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 I won't call it knowledge or wisdom. I'll say the opinions here on the Big Dog Podcast um, have a broader reach than, you know, Mrs. Johnson's three-year-old beagle that we put her before and after video up. So, I don't know. But uh, all that to say, you know, thank you so much for for listening in today. And or if you're watching on YouTube, you know, that's awesome or or, or wherever else. Um, you know, this is episode 10 and gosh, guys, we are having an absolute blast, uh, today in the studio. It's just me and my man, Jonathan. And what I'm talking to you about today is I want you to know your numbers, know your numbers. It's really an easy concept. All right. Everything that seems overwhelming to you in your life, most everything that seems overwhelming to you in your life. If you actually know the numbers around it, if you break it down, know your numbers, you can remove the weight that's on your shoulders. You can remove the the overwhelming part of it. Best example, let's not even talk business yet, okay? Let's talk about personal health. I'm a big guy. I'm a heavy guy. I've been on the heavier end of the spectrum my entire life. You know, it's just something that, that I've battled. And it's something that, um, you know, I'm really, I've always been self-conscious about. I don't want to go to the pool. I don't want to, um, you know, go to the beach. I don't want to do, you know, all those things. It is not an area of my life that is excellent. It's an area of my life that I've always struggled. And, um, you know, if I was worried about, I need to lose, call it 100 pounds. It's not 100 pounds. I'd probably look sickly as can be if I lost 100 pounds. But, if, you know, let's say it is 100 pounds that, that you need to lose. If you're focused on that 100 pounds, it's so tough to, to stay working towards day in and day out, doing the little steps that you need to in order to get to that 100, 100 pounds. You got to take that 100 pounds and you got to break it down to a monthly number, a weekly number a daily number and really a daily number that does not even equate um, directly to, to weight loss. You need to know the number as far as maybe just how many steps you need to take each day, how many uh, calories you need to be taking in based on how many calories you burn on a typical day. If you know those numbers down to a day and all you got to focus on is that, that daily task, that meet those daily requirements, God willing, you're waking up tomorrow anyway. And you can now focus on that day. Focus on that day. You're doing these things anyway. It's so much easier to win the day than it is to win the three, six, nine, 12 months, 18 months it might take to accomplish that, that weight loss target if it's a large one. Um, you, know, you got to break it down, but you got to know your numbers. If all you're focused on is like, you know, I want to be 185 pounds. I think I was born 165. Sorry, Ma. Uh, you know, it, if I want to be 185 pounds and I focus on the fact that I'm starting at 285, man, that's daunting. But if my focus is on, I got to get my workout in today. I've got to get this many steps today. And I'm just plugging along and knocking that out. Boom, the day is done. That is progress towards that big goal, that end result. And I can stay motivated because I won today. I'm stacking little wins. And we've talked about it on previous episodes. You know, everybody wants to stay focused on the huge goal and chase the big goal. And when you miss it, it's devastating. 
So why not stack these little goals? Boom, 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 boom. As you work your way towards it. Because everything difficult is going to take work. Everything worth it's going to take work. Nothing's easy. <laughs> That's worthwhile, right? So from a business standpoint, it's the same thing. Know your numbers. You know, people are like, Josh, my business isn't growing. I, I see your dog training business is doing well. I see your, your boarding and daycare business is growing, going well. You're, you're advertising to hire people. You know, clearly, you're not looking to hire people if you're not growing. You're not experiencing exponential growth. How are you doing that? You know, we want to grow. We're doing a good job, but we're just not getting anywhere. What are your numbers? Talk to me about your numbers. The first thing I ask for. Well, you know, we want to do $300,000 in sales this year. All right, cool. What are you spending on advertising? What are you, um, how many trainers or how many employees does it, you need for your business to do $300,000 in sales this year? Um, how much of your time will it require to get to $300,000 in sales of you actually performing the tactical tasks of your business versus operating your business. You know, what do those things look like? How many calls do you need to make a day? How many leads need to come in a week, a month for you to hit that $300,000 mark? If you need to do $300,000 in sales for your business to take care of your staff, and I'm just 300, it's just a number. We could say 3 billion. It, it really doesn't matter. $300,000 to take care of your family, to cover your overhead of your expenses. Maybe you got an employee or two or more. What are you doing to get to that 300,000? Most often I hear, I don't know. That's just where we need to be. I'm doing the installs. I'm making the widget. I'm making the calls. I'm like, okay, but how what's your average sale for product? Well, it's, you know, 10 bucks. Okay. Well, let's do the, the math. Let's know your numbers. $300,000, $10, X. That's how many of these things you got to sell. Okay. Your, your product, your service is $1,000 a transaction. 300000 is what you need gross revenue. Well, it's kind of easy, right? We need 300 of these transactions this year to get it done. So we need less than one transaction completed a day for the course of the year to get that done. How many leads does it take for you to get to one sale to one transition? Well, usually I book one out of every 30 people I talk to. It's kind of unique. It's kind of specialized, whatever. So it's not a high conversion rate. All right. Is it not a high conversion rate because we're not targeting the right people? We're not putting the the marketing dollars towards the right place or and so you're getting bad bad leads or is it no these are the ideal things and it legitimately does take 30 people to get to that one average sale the problem is when i talk to other business owners out there they don't know their numbers they don't know what that takes once you get that map built out though man it's amazing how the the focus shifts. It's amazing how the results change when you get dialed in and focused on your numbers. They can't be my numbers. They can't be Jonathan's numbers. They got to be your numbers for your scenario, for your situation, for your job, for your company, for your health, for, I mean, guys, this could be anything. This could be how much time do I really need to make sure I'm spending with my kids each week? Reverse engineer that. What does your day at work have to look like so that you can make sure you have the amount of quality time you want with your family day in and day out? Just build it backwards. Have the end goal in mind, know what that is, and then start breaking it down layer by layer by layer. So let, let me give you a practical example of what something that I do. And really it's, it's a document that I, that I live in. Um, and it is one of the primary things that I'm responsible for uh, in the running of my businesses. Um, you know, we call it the roadmap. 
And it is the roadmap to, you know, it's, it's a, it's a revenue goal. You know, I'm being honest with you. That is our target. And it's not because I need to hit this target for personal financial gain or anything like that. It has nothing to do with that. Day in and day out, I see the impact that um, as we grow, we're able to have on clients' lives. And I want to be able to duplicate that experience over and over and over again, because I believe without a doubt that the experience our clients have, whether it's with our dog training or it's with our boarding and daycare, it is an exceptional experience and is the very best experience people with the need for those services are going to have where I offer those services. Hands down. I believe that. I'll say it. I don't care. It's that way. And if you don't believe that about your own business, you need to get out of that business. You got to just stop doing it. You've got to believe that what you're doing is the best. That is the best opportunity for that client. Okay. And so I want to do that for more people. As long as we're not sacrificing the experience, the quality of the service that we're delivering, I want to continue to grow. So I'm going to grow as fast as I can find great human beings. All right. But I know there is a certain target where I want to be at in the next two years. And what I've done is I've taken that down to what it looks like specifically here in 2021. And I've broken it down like for the year. It's broken down for the month. It's broken down by the week. It's broken down to the day. And I know specifically what we need to do on a daily basis to put ourselves in a situation to hit that goal a year from now and in turn to hit that goal two years from now. And I promise you that over the next six months, 12 months, and 18 months, that goal I have two years from now is getting pushed out further because I'm going to see there's additional opportunities for us. And the amount of families that we can impact with the services that we provide, that fires me up. That keeps me motivated. That keeps me wanting to improve. The amount of families' lives that we can change by growing our team and giving professional opportunities for people who may may not have thought they could make an incredible living working with dogs day in and day out, being outside, not stuck to a desk, a great living with a ton of flexibility, and see immediate results for their efforts and actions, and families that are just ecstatic because what was a massive stressor on their lives is now a loving, caring, contributing member of the family who can be an active part of that family and not just a dog who's stuck in a crate. 10 hours a day and gets out to eat and go to the bathroom and then back in the kennel because it's acting like a fool running around the house. And because everybody is like, like us and you, you know, stressed out, maxed out, giving everything to work and to whatever. And you get home and you just like, ah, oh, can't deal with this dog. So what do we do every day? Feed it, let it go to the bathroom, put it in the crate. I just don't got the energy for that right now. No, screw that. You've got the energy for it. You just got the animal. You don't want to put the time in to getting that animal where it can be a productive member of your family. That's what we do. When our dogs are done training with us and we're done teaching our clients, if they're not including the dog in an activity every day of their life, it's just because it's not appropriate for the dog. It has zero to do with the dog's ability to be an active member of that family and a well-behaved member of that family. So that's where I get fired up because as we grow, I'm not just impacting clients' families. I'm impacting employees' families, staff. We got new opportunities as we continue to grow. People to transition from training roles to marketing and sales and videography and, and you know, podcasts and all these things. That fires me up. I know my numbers. When we have a bad day, that's okay. That day's dead to me. It sucks. I've moved on. I'm not overwhelmed of this massive goal that people carry and they stay so focused on it when they fall short, like I'm never going to hit that. You got to know your numbers. You got to break them down and know what you got to do every day to chip away at it, chip away at it, chip away at it, chip away at it. And next thing you know, holy shit, we're way ahead of schedule. It's crazy how this happens over and over and over again when I'm talking to business owners, when I'm talking to salespeople. (laughs) 
get to know your numbers. Get, get incredibly passionate about your numbers. Become a psychopath about your numbers. Become obsessive about your numbers. This works in every aspect of your life. Every aspect. 42 years old, battled weight, like I said, my entire life. I'm more consistent the last two months than I've ever been in my life with it. And I'm just dropping a little bit, dropping a little bit, dropping a little bit. I got a guy I'm working with. Shout out to Mark. Got a plan in place for me. And all I focus on is the task of that day. I'm not worried about, oh, by June, I need to be in a whatever. Because it, there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. And if it doesn't happen by June, because I'm old now and I lose weight slower than I used to and all those things, like, it, I'm, I'm just going to be like, ah, oh, forget it. And my health is the one part of my life where I have continuously allowed myself to lose. And I'm approaching it now in a very different way and a little bit at a time. And hopefully as these videos, you know, these episodes go, you see a smaller version of me sitting in this damn chair. But it's working because finally it's clicked for me. This is how I operate my businesses. This is how I operate with my teams. Why am I not doing this with my health? Clearly this works for you, Josh. Clearly this motivates you. Apply it to that. Know your numbers. I know my numbers. I know it for my health. I know it for my business. And then you do the work. But you got to know them. I know exactly what we got to do today. Anybody who comes by our offices, they walk in. There's this massive ass TV. I don't, I don't even know how big that TV is. Jonathan, how big is that TV? It's a big TV. Got to be at least 64 inches. 64. Yeah, it's got, I think, I don't know. I remember I had to bring it in Bertha. I think it's like 90 inch TV. So at least 64 is correct. Yeah. It is the biggest TV I've ever seen in my life. Costco had it on sale though. So I got it dirt cheap. Look, I want to age myself. That thing was a quarter of the price of my first big screen TV I ever bought. When Devin and I, a couple of years after we got married, it was like a quarter of the price and it's easily three times the size of the TV and weighs a hell of a lot less too. Anyway, you come in our offices, there's this massive screen on the wall and it's rotating through numbers. It's just data. It's sales for the week, for the day, for the month, for the year, how we're tracking for each of our locations across the country. There's a whole nother screen that pops up for Bay Rivers, talking about sales and dogs and new clients. Um, then we got a whole nother one that is uh, talking about social media and engagement and those stats and our posts and our YouTube subscribers. We're getting the, the podcast added into that. These numbers are just constantly rotating and they're in front of everybody all day, every day. We have our sales team and marketing people and all that because it's important. I want to create a culture where they understand that numbers are important because the better we do, the more we can do, the more we can impact, the more, the more generous we can be, the more lives we can change, the more people we can hire and create opportunities for and protect them from, God forbid, another pandemic thing hits off and people are getting laid off left and right. We laid off nobody. We hired, 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 hired. And I come back to it it's because we knew our numbers. We knew our numbers. We knew the targets. We knew we ne where we needed to be. We didn't freak out about the big number. We stayed focused on the daily number. Win the day. And if you don't win the day, you're going to be a hell of a lot closer to winning that day than if you've not been paying attention to the numbers to begin with. And then you come in and you crush it next. What's up, Jonathan? Yeah, I think that it's what you're saying is really important because you're speaking about winning the day. And I think it comes down to even smaller than that, just winning the moments. Because when you break, it's like when we were all in school at one point, we thought, oh, I have an hour left in class. Well, that's two 30 minute periods. And now, oh, that's four 15 minute periods. Yep. And when you start to do that with your business, you have a large number monetarily that gets broken down into a number of transactions yeah. that gets broken down into a number of clients. And really, when you break that down further, you get a number of moments in which you need to win to 100%. be successful. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And 
you know, that actually leads me to a point. A couple of weeks ago, I, I put something out to my staff. I was like, guys, I need you to act as if I don't exist before 10 a.m. I don't want to call. Do not walk into my office. Do not text me unless literally it is an emergency. Like something, it, like something happened to a dog. Uh, our building is on fire. You need me to leave so I don't die. Um, a literal emergency. There is no reason to text me, call me, walk into my office. Because from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., I feel like that's where I'm best. And if, if that starts getting jacked up, for me personally, this may not work for everybody, but for me and my rhythm, I get so much done between 5 and 10 a.m. Now once 10 hits, that's when all my appointments are scheduled. That's when we jump in the studio typically, um, you know, with guests. After that time, my meetings with my staff, um, meetings with clients, other things, everything happens after 10 a.m. And if I can be focused from five to 10, I'm good for what the day brings. Because when you, when you run it, I don't care what size your organization is, you're, you got your own business and you're, you're the boss, you're the owner. Your, your sole responsibility is you're pissing on fires all day. <laughs> Literally. It's just problem. Here's a solution. Problem, here's a solution. Problem, here's a solution. Now, I am fortunate. I am blessed. I've got a great team in place, and they're running around dealing with a lot of those things. But when you get to a certain point, it doesn't matter. There's still stuff that's going to involve you, and that's that's what I need to be available for. But if I'm getting crushed in the morning before 10 a.m., I those things will never get done because now I'm being reactive through the day to things that are coming about that I can't be ready for, that I'm not prepared for. So I control till 10 a.m. Those moments are controlled. I'm protecting my schedule. All right? I'm protecting that schedule because the schedule is no different than the numbers. The financial numbers is no different than the weight numbers. Apply this. Think about really how you can apply this in your life. Know your numbers and break them down. I have a Google sheet. That's where everything lives. I'm a very visual person, all right? If we don't win the day, the day is marked in red. If we do win the day, it's marked in green. If it's the best damn day we've ever had, from whether it's sales, dogs in attendance and daycare, social media engagement, it doesn't matter. If it's the best day we've ever had, it goes into this turquoise blue. That is a record day. So when I'm looking at this sheet, if I see a lot of red, I, I know we're falling short. We need to tweak this thing. I see a lot of green, we're tracking. I see blue after blue after blue, like constantly being replaced. Ooh, we're really trending well. We're breaking records daily. And then I had the same color-coded things for my weeks, the same color-coded things for the month, and the same thing color-coded for the years, for the last eight years. I've applied the same principle to Bay Rivers. And then all of it, they don't sponsor me. I wish they did because I pay a lot of money to use this. But Gecko Board. It's what I use to take all of this data that we have and transfer it into charts, graphs. Um, These are the things that communicate uh, with the TVs. You can pull it up on on your web browser. It doesn't matter. You always have access to it. And again, for me as a visual person, I'm eating, sleeping, breathing our numbers. And so I know where we got to be. And in turn, my team knows where they have to be. We're all dialed in and focused because we know our numbers. And when we started doing this and I started sharing the numbers with more than just myself, I wasn't the only one carrying that weight. I wasn't the only other, only one losing sleep at night about it. When I started sharing these numbers with the team and putting it in front of them consistently, thank you, Thomas. Everybody's bought in. I was out the other day for my anniversary and um, I got a text, Josh, how do we turn on the TV to get it to the part with the charts? Team was freaking out because they couldn't see the numbers. My heart skipped a beat. I was so happy. I was so happy because they're getting it. Because now they know the numbers. They know the numbers. I damn sure know the numbers. We're accomplishing our goals. And if we're not, we're tweaking what we need to do to make sure that we are. Figure out your numbers, 
know your numbers, study your numbers. Don't just do this little, this little task and break it down and work backwards like I've been walking you through and then do nothing with it. You need to study it, become obsessed with it, stay focused on it. I promise you, I promise you, one of two things are going to happen. It's either going to lead you to a lot of broken processes and systems within your business. So you're going to tweak things. You're going to reevaluate. You're going to adjust. You're going to implement uh, new strategies and new systems because what you think you're doing that is working towards getting you to that goal you want to be at, you're going to find out it isn't because you're looking at it in little tiny pieces. So you can make those adjustments. And you're also going to ultimately end up blowing by those goals or figuring out what really is a realistic goal for you because you've broken it down like this and seen, is this realistic? A lot of you, <laughs> you have a goal. You know, again, I come back to the $300,000. Now let's say it's just 300000 in revenue. You know, and you're selling, you know, 10 products a month that cost $25. That's the retail price on it, 25 bucks. How the hell you get to $300,000 selling 10 or 20 of these things a month? It's never going to happen. And you're wondering why you're not accomplishing your goal. Man, because you don't know, you don't know what's realistic. You don't even know your numbers at all. Know your numbers. Break them down. Study them. Become obsessed with them. And then win so damn big. You can do a whole lot more with it. Know your numbers. I love you. I appreciate you listening. Get into your numbers. It's so important. If you got questions about this, um, hit me up, DMs on Instagram, email us at bigdogpodcast at joshwilson.dog, um, anywhere on social. I mean, you hit us up and, you know, we can set up a call. I can walk, I can dig into this with you a little bit deeper. I can show you a template of the sheets that we use because it literally can be applied to any industry, any aspect of your life. And it'll give you a little roadmap. That's our roadmap. And I'm happy to share it with you too. Hit us up. Leave a review, subscribe. If there's somebody you know that would benefit from what you heard today, share the podcast with them. Let us know how we're doing or what else you'd like to hear about. And, you know, we're going to keep on getting in the studio and hopefully sharing a little bit of our knowledge. I'll keep saying opinions. I don't know how knowledgeable we are. Yeah, I would go with that. All right, guys. We'll see you next time on the Big Dog Podcast. Mm-hmm.